Are you being compelled to prove to others around you something that you have in order for them to accept you? When we try to prove ourselves to others, we set ourselves on impressing them whether it's a spouse, a boss, a parent or a peer. We want so desperately to be cheered by them that we're gonna overwork or compromise our health and morals. The approval of others becomes the most important standard in our lives. So we sacrifice our beliefs, our convictions, or standards so that we will be accepted by them. When others are our standards, we are always going to fail to find the approval and the acceptance that we long for. The gospel reminds us that others cannot offer us lasting acceptance. That God, not others, is our standard. We are never going to sufficiently prove ourselves to others because we are flawed. God is our standard. We fail to meet it, but the gospel reminds us that Jesus has met God's standard for us. Others aren't nearly as forgiving as Jesus is. We don't need to prove ourselves because Jesus has already proven our worth. We don't need to seek approval from others because we are approved by grace in Christ. That is some good news. Again, when we try to prove ourselves to ourselves, we set ourselves on improving upon our past. We try to perfect ourselves. We often say things like, I used to look at porn, but now I don't. I never used to go to church, but now I do. I used to not be missional, but now I am. This may work for a while as long as we succeed, but as soon as we feel ourselves, the bottom of our worth drops. Our sense of worth and acceptance comes from moral or spiritual self-improvement, not from Jesus. Our standard is self, not God. Self isn't nearly as forgiving as Jesus is. The gospel reminds us that we have not sinned against ourselves, but we have sinned against God. And that is why the gospel reminds us that we must look to God for the ultimate standard. God provides a righteous, not relative standard, and it can be met alone by faith in Christ by resting in His acceptance. From our place of acceptance and rest in Jesus, we can live a life that reflects God's holy standard instead of striving against ourselves. We don't have to perfect ourselves because imperfect people cling to a perfect Christ. Again, never try to impress God with your fleshly works. When we try to prove ourselves to God, we set ourselves on impressing God. We try to perform for His acceptance and approval. Look how devoted I've been to you. I'm involved in so much mission and so much ministry. Surely God is happy. We content ourselves with proving ourselves to God. We try to be good enough, missional enough, spiritual enough. We may even secretly believe that even though we've been forgiven in Christ, God's favor is based on our performance after salvation. We think to ourselves, if I practice enough spiritual disciplines, then I will gain the spiritual intimacy that I long for. We think that we can put God in our debt. Our standard is God, which is good, but the problem is that we cannot reach His standard. But the gospel reminds us that we are still sinners, never good enough apart from Christ. And it calls us to stop trying to prove ourselves to Him. The gospel calls us to rest in God's approval of us in Christ, to receive His fullness for sinful performance and to rely on Christ's performance for us. We don't need to impress God because Jesus has already impressed God for us. This is why the Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16, that yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but true faith in Jesus Christ. So we have also believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. Beloved, when you place your trust in Jesus Christ to save you, when you simply believe that his death on the cross canceled your sin or your debt before God, God declares you righteous in His sight. Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Therefore, to believe in Jesus alone is the only basis for a right standing before God. You were justified before God and made right in His sight only by your faith in Christ alone. When you read the book of Galatians chapter 2, Paul says that then, after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas taking Titus along with me.
I went up because of a revelation and sat before them, though privately before those who seemed influential, the gospel that I proclaim among the Gentiles, in order to make sure I was not running or had not run in vain. But even Titus, who was with me, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was Greek. Yet, because of false brothers secretly brought in who slips in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ Jesus, so that they might bring us into slavery to them, we do not yield in submission even for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. Titus was a gentle convert who had come to faith in Christ under Paul's teaching. When they got to Jerusalem and were meeting with James and Peter and John, some people there began to put pressure on Titus to be circumcised. And I'm sure they said, well, you know Titus, if you really want to be a Christian, you have to become a Jew first, and then the way you do it is to submit to the law of Moses and be circumcised. Titus was under pressure from other so-called believers. Though Paul accuses them of being false Christians, they were pressuring Titus to conform to what they said a good Christian should be. Have you seen that kind of pressure today? In fact, have you ever looked at someone and said, well, if they were really Christian, they wouldn't do this or they wouldn't do that? It might be something as superficial as what clothes they wear or what kind of music they listen to, but it can go much deeper than that. That person is not really a good Christian if they have tattoo or if they are divorced or if they have never been married or if they have a criminal record or if they struggle with addiction. Some churches say that a person cannot be a real Christian unless they have some kind of supernatural baptism in the Holy Spirit and have spoken in tongues. The list just goes on and on. That person might be saved, but they are always relegated to some kind of second tier status in God's sight unless they achieve this particular goal. But the Apostle Paul makes it clear to us that no one is justified by what you say they should be. Titus had nothing to prove to anyone about his justification, but God. He did not have to conform to anyone else's expectation of what it meant to be acceptable in God's sight. He had already become acceptable in God's sight through his faith in Jesus, and that was enough. Your right standing before God comes from being justified by your faith in Christ alone. By your faith in Christ, you do not have anything to prove to anybody else. Live in the freedom which Christ has set you free in and do not submit to the yoke of slavery. God bless you.